shot blocked by Bonte and the save. We like to say hello to our fans watching us in Monterrey, Mexico. Also those, uh, of course, at Baltimore, Maryland, and to you coming to us wherever you may be throughout North America, watching this game live tonight on Fox Soccer Channel. Along with Roger Faulkner, I'm Al Polowski. 6-2, Monterey. With the lead as Bonte taps that one out, we'll have a kick in for the blast. Well, the game's is fairly even on a balance, balance of play, but uh, Monterey have just taken their chances. That's the uh, that's the key thing. They've just put him away. Alvarez has created a couple of goals out of nothing. Now Alvarez trying to work hard on the defensive end. Dolevsky a clear. And we apologize uh, to those of you that have just tuned in or uh, tried to tune in a bit earlier. We had some audio and technical difficulties here in Milwaukee, but we are working hard at ironing those out. Thanks for bearing with us. The 2008 MISL Championship here is a Dotto Neto. Marked by Pontieri, and then coming over was Delevsky on the help. There's probably a few people out there that prefer the game without our audio. I I'll can't imagine that. <laughs> Who would that be? <laughs> Besides your family, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Aristodemo. Now to Ryan Pierce. Neto. And a knockaway. Bonaraza trying to attack. Diego Pontieri. Sagu will drag marking, it down. Good tight marking and then a little step in for the interception. They're staying very close to these lively Baltimore forwards. They have to. Now Alvarez. Tony Martinez needs help. Monty a difficult touch there. Pontieri can't bring it in. Ray Martinez for Baltimore battles, but Vega Cordia wins it for Monterey. Now Birchi knocked away by Nelson. Basco working hard for it. Goes down in midfield. And it's out of play. It'll be a kick in for the blast. Not intentional, really. The player was down on the ground and had no uh, option to fall over him, but wasn't really brought down deliberately. Ray Martinez to Mike Lookingland. An overlap. In front, Cabral score! 6-4, Denison Cabral, his second goal of the game, and the blast are within two. Why you love to have a little 5 foot seven guy like Danny Cabral, so quick, spotting the opportunity in the, back, in, in the box, looking for the rebound, made it a very easy goal. He's picked up hundreds like that, literally in his career. A man with over 800 goals, and uh, just a phenomenal, uh, phenomenal athlete. So Cabral with his second goal of the game is seventh in the playoffs as we take a look at it one more time. 19 postseason points for Dennison Cabral. Give Mike Lookingland the assist. So six to four. And now Monterey has their lead down to one goal. What was your goal? 25-23, was it? They said. <laughs> yeah. The rate we're going. We're on pace for one we're of those. We're on track. We're on track. Martinez now in his own end. Millwood with some pressure. Now Millwood with pressure. Bonte stole the ball. But Medina wins it back for Monterey. Alvaraza gets it out of trouble. Cross there from Penedis. Shot wide by Kiros. Penedis in front. Sagu picks up the loose change. It's a great cross by Penedis too. Just the left foot or right of just saw his partner out of the corner of his eye and hit a beautiful through ball it's right across the field. Aristodemo for Basco is the blast now. Will come ahead trailing by two. Neto. Knock away there. Neto through two defenders to Basco for Neto. Now Aristodemo. The blast with some pretty dribbling but Monterey 
just good enough defensively yeah. to thwart the attack. The Neto very difficult to dislodge from the ball, isn't it? Just so difficult. Kennedy's. Neto takes it back. Ryan Pierce. Now Nelson, as we approach the 10-minute mark to go in the first half, 6-4, La Raza, Cabral. Here comes Campos, Monterey a run, a great ball for Alvarez, already with two goals tonight. Mega Cordia, shot blocked away by Nelson. Collected in midfield. At Pichardo. Now Dolepski for Vega Cordia. Here's Dolepski. Once again, we appreciate you joining us tonight for the 2008 MISL Championship. We apologize for the technical difficulties you've been having. But our hardworking crew here in Milwaukee is working on them feverishly. And Little by little, we're getting back up to 100%. Now a kick-in will be coming up from the top of the arc for Monterey. 9-12 to go here in the first half. 6-4, La Raza. Martinez will be the trigger man on the ball. The man who runs everything for, uh, for Monterey. Really such a key player for defense and offense. Martinez. Vega Cordia, but Sagu read it. Right there, positionally for the save, and now the outlet for Ray Martinez by him. And Hennoni Martinez gets it back to his keeper, Bonte. Alvarez, a good ball for Vega Cordia. Birchi. Alvarez, but looking in good defense, back to Sagu. Ray Martinez, now Gonzaga, just one. Great ball into the box, just eluding Millwood. Steele. Medina, back down by Wakefield. Now off the ball, Medina and Wakefield pushing and shoving. Meanwhile, Baltimore trying to attack, Gonzaga. His attempt blocks. Now a reset for the blast. 6-4 La Raza. Eight minutes to play before halftime. The 2008 MISL Championship here on Fox Soccer Channel. Carlos Garcia. Medina. Collides with Pierce. Pierce the foul. His second of the first half. Not a lot of fouls called, Roger. Three so far against Baltimore, just one against Monterey. Yeah, very few fouls. Uh, not because it hasn't been a little bit testy. It has. We just throw, just throw a little off the ball incident. Now Monterey a restart. Jorge Campos. Of course, shares that name with a famous goalkeeper from Mexico. Here's Bonte. Curtis. Campos. Monterey to reset. Now La Raza with some possession, Roger, and uh, playing a little bit of Baltimore's game. I think Baltimore's having a little hard time with this push-pull kind of game that, uh, that's being played by uh, La Raza. They, uh, they attack, and they pull back. And we have a timeout on the field. 7-0-1 remains before halftime. La Raza leads Baltimore 6-4 here in the 2008 MISL Championship. We'll be back in just a moment. Keep it here on Fox Soccer Channel. And the Midwest Airlines landing for tonight among their value cap.
guests are the St. Mary's Soccer Club. So welcome to There's Garcia. Salenza. Lost the ball, Medina. The other way for La Raza. Salenza wins it back. Salenza with space. Back post score. Carlos Garcia. We're tied. That one created by Giuliano Salenza. Yeah. That's, a, that's a real garbage goal, isn't it? Any, anyone could have put that one away at the far post, but that's what that's how you structure the play. He just worked so hard. Salenza down this right hand side, getting the ball across, and it was an easy little pick to Mr. Garcia. So Carlos Garcia with his first postseason goal. And Baltimore, who has scored the last four points, has even this matchup at six. 355 remains now before halftime as Kiros sends a three-pointer that was deflected right to Sagu. Firing for Basco. Kiddos his marker. Sagu for Matt Watson. Or rather, check it. That was Lucio Gonzaga. Now Beersheet. The minute 40 to go before halftime. 6 6. Cabral down. Foul called on Marco Vega Cordia. And the card is out. The first blue card of the game is on Vega Cordia. It was not in agreement with the call. So Baltimore now in a 6-6 game will go on the power play for the last minute 37. Well, whether in agreement or not, he's over. in there for two minutes. Opportunity now for Baltimore to be a great time to score when uh, you've only got a minute 37 left on the clock. You'd like to go in at halftime with a two-point lead. You, Use that man advantage. Wakefield fires the three-pointer wide. Cabral with the rebound out to Aristodemo, who will run the point. Neto and Millwood also on the field for the blast. Neto trying to get through. Martinez a knock away. Monterey actually last in the league, 52.3 in uh, penalty kills. So uh, they're not the strongest in that department, so an opportunity indeed for Baltimore. 6-6 six, six tie, Baltimore on the power play for the rest of the half, a minute to go in it. Now Millwood for Wakefield. Martinez sealed him off in the corner. Bonte able to grab the ball and now the outlet. Armando Tedan working shorthanded. Steel Neto. Now Cabral to Aristodemo, 40 seconds to go in the half, 6-6. Six, six. Baltimore a man ahead. Gonzaga. Three-pointer is high. Aristodemo, 22 seconds on the clock. Wakefield, sealed off in the corner by Pontietti. Ponti to grab it. And now the throw. Once Negretti collects. Five seconds in the half. Negretti will run out the rest of the time. And a card on Cabral with two seconds to go in the half. And that's significant because Monterey, one, will get a restart now at even strength. Two, if they don't score, when they kill off 23 seconds of the third quarter, they'll go a man up at that time. Yep. Yep. They, uh, they do tend to make the most of it when they go down. Here we see the foul again, and it uh, definitely is a, is a trip. He's down. And uh, is receiving attention now on the field. So Denny Cabral draws the penalty and then gets a penalty all in the space of, uh, of a minute or so. So Victor Negretti with some good work and he's rewarded even though he uh, took the injury but rewarded by drawing the blue card. That's Cabral's first penalty here in the playoffs, Roger, in a 6-6 game with two seconds to go before halftime. And play Monterey with the play that could be huge 
yeah. when we look back on this one at the end of the night. It's r strange, really, that he would be fouled. I'm not sure that Negretti was really planning on getting in on goal there. I think he was just trying to kill the last two or three seconds that were on the clock. He was just trying to run around the boards. He didn't have much support up there to help him, so uh, why Cabral would go in quite like that, I don't know. So Martinez will trigger the restart. Monterey with Dolevsky on the field, as well as Pontieri and Birshi. Larraza with two seconds. Remember, the ball must cross the goal line before zeros are on the clock. Martinez. Nobody home in front. That's the end of the first half. So we'll play four on four, even strength, to begin the third quarter, and then the blast will be a man down. We've reached halftime here at the 2008 MISL Championship live from U.S. Cellular Arena in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, along with Roger Faulkner. I'm Al Palowski. Sal Rosamilli, also a member of our broadcast crew here tonight. We've had some technical difficulties, so we haven't been able to go to Sal yet. But uh, in a moment, we uh, hope to uh, have Sal with head coach Danny Kelly. Let's go down to them now. Sal, take it away. Thanks, Sal. Danny Kelly, 6-6 ball game here at halftime, Roger. And uh, this is a ball game that has been very well played, and we expect more in the second 30 minutes. We've reached the half. We'll come back with more on our halftime report in just a few moments. Once again, our score here, it's Baltimore 6, Monterey 6. You're watching the 2008 MISL Championship on Fox Soccer Channel. in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Our thanks to you for joining us and sticking with us with through uh, some technical difficulties here tonight. But, Roger, uh, we have seen quite a ball game here uh, between these two teams for the first 30 minutes. Neither team has really asserted itself as the champion so no, far. No, they haven't. I, th I think the Monterey coach will probably be the happier of the two. Danny Kelly will be a little frustrated because he's got a lot of power up there in Millwood and Cabral and, and Neto and so on, and they're not... They're not firing on all cylinders, and the Monterey game plan seems to be working. Byron Alvarez with a couple of goals tonight, now has 10 in the postseason. Dennis and Cabral with a couple of goals for the blast. Uh, no surprises there that those two would be on the scoreboard. No, well, Alvarez has been really hot in the playoffs, hasn't he? Not, uh, not so hot during the course of the 51 points. is very credible, but he's not the lead scorer. That's Dolevsky with 108 for Monterey, and uh, uh, Mr. Martinez with 96. But he's the man who's come through and carried the load in the playoffs. Can you take a look at these two teams, Roger? First of all, for Monterey, if you're Eric Geyer, what do you tell your squad at the half? I think I think you keep playing the same way you're playing. And I, I think they're taking the opportunities that they're, they're, they're finishing when they counterattack. They've, they've had men in the right positions at the right time. Mr. Alvarez let him keep cracking on goal because he seems to have found the golden load right now. And uh, I think it's a little tougher for... Uh, for Mr. Kelly, I think he's had a he's got to shake his team up a little bit because they, they they've had territorial advantage, but they haven't they haven't put it to effect. All right, it's six six here at the halftime break. The 2008 MISL Championship, Baltimore and Monterey, they're dead even. And in the third quarter, when we come back, they'll be even strength for 23 seconds, and then for the first time today, Monterey will be on a power play. So once again, we're at the half. We hope you stay with us here on Fox Soccer Channel. It's six six. Monterey and Baltimore in the 2008 MISL Championship. Many good players, obviously, in Mexico, and with that core they got from Philadelphia with Zalewski and Martinez, they were able to build a very effective team. But Eric Guy is such a great guy, such a great coach. So happy for him to see him bring this team here. He's got great heart. Let's take a look now at our first half highlights and how we got to this point here tonight on Fox Soccer Channel with our... MISL championship game. First goal of the game, Byron Alvarez from Yvonne Medina. Then it was Dennison Cabral on a restart to tie it up at two. That would be Cabral's first of two goals. Then uh, 
Monterey would score two more in a row. Byron Alvarez's second goal of the night, 10th of the postseason from the goalkeeper Bonte, and then Avon Medina with a two-point goal, and Monterey was up 6-2. Yeah. to two. Showed his potential with that wonderful little fake move. Dennison Cabral, that would make it 6-4, to four, his second goal of the night. Dennison, the MISL veteran, and so far having a great game here this evening. And then the tie, Carlos Garcia from Giuliano Salenza. Great work by Salenza to get that ball to Garcia. Yeah, one of those nice little garbage goals you love to see if you're a coach. Make the goals easy. You don't have to score great goals from 30 yards. Just a little tip in at the far post, and it's a tied ball game. 6-6 six, six here in the 2008 MISL Championship. Roger, you had to take a look at the styles tonight, Baltimore versus Monterey. On the scoreboard, it's even, but style-wise or possession-wise, who's winning this contest? Right. Baltimore have had more of the possession, but, but it hasn't been very confident possession. You haven't seen the interplay between those terrific forwards that you normally see. And, and Martinez is a rock in the middle of that defense. I mean, he's just unbelievable, such composure. And, and yet he can lead counterattacks. He's 32 years old, and he seems to move float from one end of the field down to the other in, in remarkably quick time. And he, he just commands a big commanding presence there, and I think he's making a difference in this ball game. Now, yeah, with this one tied at six, really, uh, you always say anything can happen in the second half, but truly anything can happen, and that's one of the great things about a, a one-game championship. All you do is have to win one. Oftentimes, you say that benefits the underdog. Many people felt Monterey, they were the lower seed, they were the underdog coming in tonight. But after 30 minutes, Roger, this Monterey team looks every bit like a team that's been around the league for some time. They look very, very good, don't they? they they've just blended together during the course of the season. The coaches had them running up and down the mountains in Monterey because he says this is an aerobic sport. It's not 90 minutes outdoor soccer. You've got to change your whole sort of physical approach to training. And he's just put in a discipline there and his work. I could see Eric Geyer doing that. Yeah. Well, I don't think Eric runs up and no, down the hills I, I with could him. see him <laughs> out there telling his troops to go up and down. Oh, yeah. He waits at the bottom. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Quicker, faster. <laughs> and the Baltimore Blast, Roger, this is the team. They have the most depth in the league. They're not worried right now at all, are they? I wouldn't think so. They're, they're a little perplexed, perhaps, that uh, it, with so, so solid at the back, really, with Looking Land and Nelson and company, and then uh, all that power up front, and then creative players like Robbie Aristodemo in midfield. They, they should be winning this game. All right, let's send it down now to the third member of our broadcast crew, Sal Rosamilia, with a very special guest here at the half. Ed Hill, investor operator of the Baltimore Blast. 6-6 uh, six, six tie here so far at halftime. You're looking for your fourth championship as owner-operator of the club. How do you like your chances in the second half? Well, you know, we, I think we have a very good shot, but in this game, anything could happen, and it, it has so far, but uh, most of us here on our, my team, including our fans, think we're going to do it. Yeah, and your fans have traveled well here. There's yeah, certainly yeah. Uh, some more, more Baltimore fans than there are Monterey fans, and what do you see as the future of the major indoor soccer league going forward from here? Well, you know, we need to uh, get a few more teams in the league and uh, make a little bit smarter business decisions about making this work. But it's a great sport. We have the best fans in Baltimore. We like to have what happens in Baltimore be translated around the rest of the league. And I think we could do it. We, we're, we have a little bit of work to do, but it's a fabulous game. It's a great game. And we have the best fans there are. It is. And good luck in the second half. And hopefully for you, you'll be holding the trophy in about an hour. All right. Thank you. Guys. Sal, Ed, thank you very much. And Roger, Ed Hale, one of the more successful owners uh, in the history of indoor yeah. soccer, not just now, but when you look throughout the game, he's really done a nice job with his team. And this decade, fielding one of the most competitive teams here in the last six seasons. Absolutely. The, the Baltimore franchise actually has operated. They've had indoor soccer now for 28 years in Baltimore. First as the Blast, then a two or three years as the Spirit, and then back again as, as the Blast. Those great days with Kenny Cooper, old friend of yours, yep. old friend of mine. Marvelous, marvelous coach. And, uh, and now are just continuing the dynasty. They come back, they win a championship every other year. And, uh, <laughs> You'll take it, right? It love it, love it. Uh, their fourth championship appearance now in six seasons, Roger. That says a lot. Not only do they get here, they've won their three previous trips. Yeah, well, it was stunning last year. They didn't make the playoffs. I mean, they, were 50, they finished 15 and 15, I think. But it, they just don't, uh, don't miss the playoffs in normal circumstances. They and Milwaukee... Our host tonight just been tremendous ballast in this league. The Baltimore Blast, if, uh, out of, or the uh, the Baltimore Blast with 15 consecutive seasons in the postseason, I believe. Yes. Yeah. So uh, 
They've been here quite a bit. 6-6 six, six game, we're at the half. Uh, just a little bit over a minute before we begin the third quarter. Again, if you're just joining us, Monterey and Baltimore will play even strength for the first 23 seconds here of the second half. And then if uh, neither team scores, Monterey will go on the power play for about a minute and a half. And that will be their first power play chance after Baltimore had a man advantage opportunity at the end of the second quarter. You know, we were talking as if it was a high scoring game actually, but when you look at their scoreboard, 6-6 six, six is not really uh, particularly unusually high score. In fact, it's probably on the modest side by MISL standards. But there have been plenty of chances, and I think that's what's created this feeling that uh, this is a wide open game with a lot of shots. And we'll take a timeout, our final timeout of the halftime show. We'll be back in just a few moments to begin third quarter action. 6-6, six, six, Baltimore, Monterey tied in the MISL championship. Stay here. 6-6 six, six, tie, 12-42, left third quarter. Marco Vega Cordia just missing up there on that shot was Beershe. Now Millwood. He's got Salenza with him. There's Salenza. Score! Baltimore's on top. 8-6. They've scored the last six points. Well, that's the sort of link up you expected to see. You expect from these Baltimore forwards. A very confident move run forward by Millwood. Lovely ball across to Salenza. Easy finish. Not much Mr. Bonte could do about it. That's the kind of way where I expected Baltimore to exercise and show their superiority, but uh, hasn't happened until this later stage. Salenza's third postseason goal, his second tonight. And Baltimore has their first lead at 8 to 6 as they vie for their fourth MISL title in the last six seasons. And Roger, should that happen? Dare you use the D word and say dynasty? <laughs> Big word, isn't it? But, uh, you know, they've just scored six points in a row, three goals in a row. They were 6-2 down in this game and taken an 8-6 lead. So that, uh, that's got to affect the psyche of the, uh, the young men from Mexico a little bit. And now to see how Laraza will respond to being down for the first time tonight. Neto for the blast. Neto with some pretty dribbling. Adonto Neto, the best in the game. Here's why. Tried to draw the foul, could not. Wakefield, wide on the three-pointer. Pierce. Now Cabral. He has two goals tonight. He and Salenza have accounted for the four Baltimore goals for Monterey. Alvarez has two. Medina the other. Eight-six blast. Good knock away there, Negretti. Yeah, very timely knock away by Negretti, too. Mill went on to cause commotion, but Monterey winds up with it and counters. Negretti for Medina. Across Lookingland sends it back in, but Hanoni Martinez. The trap and the outlet to Levski. Two on two with Alvarez, but Carlos Garcia, a good defensive play. Delevsky has not looked as sharp now tonight as we saw him earlier. Alvarez, great save by Sagu, and score! It went in, Carlos Fichardo. We're tied once again. Terrific left foot strike. Absolutely terrific left foot strike. Right into the upper part of Sagu's goal. Not much he could do about it. Probably threw it a little bit late, and we are tied again. Alvarez the assist. 8-8 ball game, and Alvarez now with five points tonight. Leads all scorers as we're tied once again. Let's go down to the sidelines for an injury update with our sideline reporter, Sal Rosamilia. Sal. Byron Alvarez, when he came off the field, said he took an elbow to the chin, to the jaw. Uh, rung his bell a little bit, but as you can see with that assist there, he'll be back on the field, and he is, and ready, ready to go. Back to you. Thank you, Sal. 8-8 ball game. Byron Alvarez. Campos with a head on it. Cabral. Garcia makes a run. Against Pontieri, now looking one. 
Watson collects for the blast. Basco. Garcia open. Score. Carlos Garcia, his second goal tonight. 10-8, Baltimore. Well, it's a well-taken goal, a lovely little move. It just hit it to the left of Mr. Bonzi, and it's a 10-8 lead for the Blast. Beautiful goal by Garcia. And we have an official timeout on the field. Carlos Garcia, his second goal tonight. Baltimore with a 10-8 lead. We'll take a break, come back with more. Baltimore by two in the 2008 MISL Championship. You're watching it on Fox Soccer Channel. Given Baltimore the lead by two once again, 10-8. Largest lead for the Blast tonight is two. Monterey is led by as many as four, but with 7.50 to go here in the third quarter, Roger, we've seen about as evenly played of a championship match as you could want. We really have. The lead has been changing, and it's... A, it's now Cabral back post, score, hat trick, Dennison Cabral, the blast, up by four. Well, it's a Cabral versus Alvarez show, isn't it? A hat trick for Cabral, a hat trick for Alvarez. But uh, another easy goal, and the uh, Monterey defense came apart a little bit too quickly there. Be very unhappy head coach with Cabral again, an easy little left foot finish. Great find by Lucio Gonzaga there. Cabral, the place you're supposed to be in indoor soccer, back post. Yep. So many opportunities there for a target yeah. or a second forward. What a celebration. A little bit dangerous. But, uh, Mr. Cabral is a happy man. 108 to go in the third. 12-8 blast. Monterey did have a 6-2 lead at the end of the first quarter, but since then it's been all Baltimore, as that one is shot up and out by Pontietti. Sagu will throw this one in with a minute two to go in the third. Looking one with a piece. Collides with Alvarez, both players down. Meanwhile, Monterey controls. Bonte pressured. Wakefield stolen. 45 seconds. Up and out. Hard shot there by Scott Butte. His first shift of the night gets his first touch. And now with 42 seconds to go in the third quarter, Bonte will have a throw in. You know, Roger, Monterey loves to run the wide open style when they can. We've seen a little bit more of that here in the last few minutes, but you feel like La Raza definitely needs the next goal to get in this one. If Baltimore yeah, they, scores it, it'll be a high mountain to climb. They really do, but you uh, somehow you don't feel they got the horses to do it. They've, uh, they've had to rely too much on, uh, on Medina, on Martinez doing things from the back, and... Uh, and Delevsky has not really been a factor. Byron Alvarez, uh, who's got three great goals, uh, has not seen so much of the ball. He just can't see that there's going to be a way back in for this for Monterey, but uh, love to see it. Matt Watson, 23 seconds to go in the quarter. Cabral, for his fourth goal, just missed. Aristodemo, that's blocked. Happy with a nifty little bike flick there. Grabbed by Bonte, Dolepski for Alvarez, broke it up, loose ball, and down in the neutral zone goes Taran Aristodemo, guilty of the foul. Last foul, number 20, Robbie Aristodemo, his second of the half. It's his second. Monterey ball with six seconds, six to, seconds to go in the quarter. 12-8 Baltimore. And even though this is going to come from the neutral zone, Hanoni Martinez, always dangerous. Martinez tries to bend it on target, and did, but Sagu with the save. He bent it, didn't he? Third quarter in the books. 15 more minutes of indoor soccer to go in the MISL in 2008. At the conclusion, ending a tie, we will have a champion. We'll take a timeout here on Fox Soccer Channel, Baltimore, who has scored. 
10 of the last 12 points in this game will take a 12-8 lead into the final 15 minutes. Stick around. We'll be back after this. He thought they were slacking off a little bit too much defensive marking. He also said defend first and foremost. That's what he wanted to happen. And he said specifically, don't get involved with any stuff off the ball. He doesn't want a blue card or a restart to get Monterey back into the game here. It seems like the feeling is 12 points may be enough at this point. Does Baltimore have indeed enough? Whistle, card, two minutes on Monterey. With 6.16 to go, Victor Santabanez will be headed off for tripping. Just the third overall penalty tonight, the second against Monterey. And with Baltimore ahead 12 to 8 and 6.16 to go, not a good time for a penalty. Not a good time for a penalty, no. Make Eric Geyer absolutely infuriated. Uh, you got to keep your discipline. There's four points, they're not out of it. But uh, another couple here on this power play, and we, you gave us the numbers earlier on Baltimore's effectiveness on power plays. Another couple of points here, and uh, we could be in a little trouble for Monterey. Cabral had it poked away by Tedan. Down he goes, and a foul on Robbie Aristodemo, who's in disagreement. Robbie picks up his third personal foul this half. If he picks up four, that would be an automatic blue card. Santabanez tonight, Roger, playing in just his second game of the playoffs. Neil Gilbert's out tonight. We haven't seen him at all, and that's why Santabanez gets yep. in. And he's in the box right now. A minute 48 left on the Baltimore power play. Six minutes to go in regulation. 12-8 Baltimore in the championship. And the Baltimore Blast trying to stake a claim to a dynasty this decade. It would be their fourth championship in six seasons. But still, plenty of time to go. Neto in front. Tedan will just clear. Baltimore says that's fine. It'll take more time off the clock. A minute 22 to go in the power play. 5.35 in regulation. Wakefield to Neto. Pocoway Martinez. Look at Robbie Aristodemo. He'll leave skin on the carpet. Fonte. Marco Vega Cordia. Tedan with a great turn, but Millwood over there to cut him off. Tedan still with an opportunity, but Millwood, some good play defensively. Unbelievably quick, how, how quickly he was shut down by Millwood and his group. Just looking land, and they just sort of converged on Tehran. Absolutely no chance. Looked like he had a good opportunity. That's a forward, but in the championship, especially with just minutes remaining, forwards become defenders when you have the lead. Aristodemo, 25 seconds to go in the power play. Cabral, Fonte, another save. 436 in regulation. 18 on the power play. Neto to Wakefield. Fonte with another save. <laughs> Didn't see it till the last moment. Loose ball on the boards. Tedan will take it. Cabral wanted a foul, but no dice. Two on two. Short-handed. Penalty has expired. Now you see Millwood's closing speed on the replay. Penalty is over, but now just 4.08 remains in the contest. Monterey needs two goals. Martinez, a rare miscue. Millwood to take advantage. Martinez gets it right back. Pontietti, three on two, La Raza. Tedan, great defensive play, Carlos Garcia. Tremendous block, tremendous block. Monterey so close to cutting that gap to two points. Right on the line, just alongside Segu, and helped his goalkeeper out. They passed around the ballots for the MVP of this one, Roger. Tempted to write Baltimore defense down as a unit. They've yes. been so good. Been very, very strong. Montietti. Deflected by Wakefield. 3.20 to go. Salenza. For Garcia, too far, Bonte. The chip to midfield, Salenza the steal. Garcia again. Salenza, great save. Great save. Monte again. Now Garcia. 
No reason to force the attack. The four-point lead, 2.58 to go in regulation. The countdown has begun in Baltimore. Great save, Bonte. Oh, has he looked unbelievable on a couple of stops these last three minutes. But for Monterey, they need to score. 2.35 to go in the MISL championship. Last lead it by four. Bonte. Deal. Neto. Great hand save by Bonte. I'm running out of adjectives to describe the saves, Roger. Yeah. Yeah, just, just done a terrific job. Such a big man and uh, such a big wingspan. Gonzaga lost the ball. Monterey finally gets possession. Dangerous back pass. Neto a steal. Score! The dagger for the blast with 2.03 to go. Comes from Gonzaga. 14-8. Baltimore. Well, the Monterey defense finally crumbles. Eric Geyer looks to the clock. He might be looking to the guards because he knows now it's done. 14 to 8 with, two, with just two minutes left. Two minutes, three seconds left. It's very, very late. Baltimore now well on top. And we're going to see Mr. Bonte, I think, exchange for a six to six. Well, Giddos with a mistake on the back pass. Neto capitalizes. When you give Neto the ball, 2 on 0 in the box. Forget it. Somebody will score on his team. The recipient was just bagging with his fifth goal of the playoffs. And now a 14-8 Baltimore lead. Eric Geiger has called timeout with 2.03 to go. Monterey will go with the sixth attacker. And now a minor miracle is needed. They look drained. Martinez looks drained, Al. He, he's out there so many minutes. I, I don't know how many breaks he's taken during the 60 minutes, but he looks absolutely drained. Going for Monterey. There fairy tale run really in the postseason as some would describe others would say well they closed out the second half of the season so strong this isn't a fairy tale but what was expected of their fans but for Monterey they're faced with quite an uphill battle now they let it 6-2 after the first quarter the Baltimore since then outscored that 12-2 Baltimore gradually put their foot on the accelerator and took control of this game. And uh, the outcome has never really been in doubt, except that uh, when, when Monterey managed to get it back to 8-8, since then, it's been steady domination by Baltimore. Victor Kiddos is the sixth attacker for Monterey. A minute 50 to go. Birche will send it in. Nelson blocks it away. Zalewski. pressure. A minute eight to go. Monterey has trouble getting the ball inside the attack zone. This flat defense tonight has been one incredible. Minute, one Golevsky in front. Cleared away. Aristodemo a little flex to the attack zone as now the Baltimore fans that are here in Milwaukee come to their feet in celebration. 48 seconds to go. 14-8 Martinez. Martinez. A knock away. Birshi. Tackled by Wakefield. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Now Giddos runs it down. The sixth attacker against Wakefield. 25 seconds left. Pressured by looking left. Vega Cordia. 18 seconds before the celebration in Baltimore can begin. 15 seconds. Now 15. Martinez. unfamiliar to the Baltimore faithful and their team who will celebrate for the fourth time in six years in moments. Our 
from the penalty box. Also, our last will be on the foul. 14, 11, four seconds to go in regulation. The last will go on the power play. And it's all a formality now. P.J. Wakefield. Will trigger. Then the celebration can begin. Looking list. Two seconds, one. That's it. Game over. And season over. For the fourth time in six seasons. The Baltimore Blast are on top of the MISL. and Cabral, hat trick today, Dennison. But I think the most important goal of the match was your first one to tie it at 2-2 and maybe a bit of a tactical error on Monterey's side with a two-man wall. What do you think? Well, I was very fortunate to be in the right time and then just uh, took a free kick and the wall just gave me an opportunity to put it in. And uh, But I guess the, the, the main thing here, we want a championship as a team. Nobody deserves, uh, you know, one trophy here. We all deserve... For the, you know, for the credit. Everybody did a great job. Congratulations to our fans that came here to Milwaukee. Thank you, everybody. And Dennison, you've been a part of all of the Blast Four Championships. How do you rank this one? It's always a special when you win. You know, for myself, uh, individually, I uh, came, you know, came back from two ACL surgery. Uh, my goal is to keep playing soccer. And now, what a great, you know, gift to come back and play another finals and also win a championship with the Blast. What did Coach Kelly tell you guys? I know in speaking to him at the end of the first half, he wasn't happy with the way you guys played. What did he do at halftime to change it? Because you really came out uh, great in the second half. Well, we didn't have a good first half, and then uh, we finished the uh, first half 6-6, six, six, you know, and uh, we gave up some goals. Uh, you know, we, I gave up the power play. Our defense just came big. And uh, But the main thing was we didn't have a good first half. We went back to basics. You know, we went back to our game on the second half. We played a tremendous defense, and this is it. Pays off. 
Dennison, I'm going to let you go celebrate with the boys. Congratulations on a great season, a great championship game. All Thank the best. You. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Guys. So, Roger, Dennison Cabral with a hat trick tonight to lead the Baltimore Blast to a 14-11 championship victory over Monterey. And uh, Dennison thanked the fans who have been very supportive. A number of them came up to watch this championship match here in Milwaukee and the Baltimore Blast. Well, four championships in six years. It's hard not to say. A <laughs> dynasty of some sort forming. You just love that word. I know that. But it's, uh, it's just been... Uh, it's been a dynasty really for 28 years. I mean, they've carried the flag for so indoor soccer in America for 28 years. Just a, tr a tremendous franchise from the early days of Kenny Cooper right up to today with Danny Kelly and Ed Hale owning this team now and they're just taking them to new heights. We'll take a break. Stay tuned. The championship trophy presentation will happen live here on Fox Soccer Channel. The Baltimore Blast, 14-11 winners over Monterey. They're the champions of the 2008 MISL. That's the winners of the 2008 MISL championship game you just witnessed here tonight on Fox Soccer Channel. Along with Roger Faulkner, I'm Al Pulowski. We're glad you could join us tonight. Now to the third member of our broadcast crew with the game-winning coach, Sal Rosamelia, has Baltimore Blast skipper Danny Kelly. Thanks, Al. Here with coach Danny Kelly and his 9-year-old son, Keegan. Uh, obviously happy with today's result. Uh, this is the fourth championship you've been a part of with Baltimore. Two as a player, one as a player coach, and this time as head coach. Are any of them sweet, more sweeter than the others? Oh, no, they're all sweet. I mean, this one's special because we've got a special group of guys here. You know, they showed tremendous character throughout the season. You know, we lost five games in a row on point. People were saying we need to make changes. We stuck with this group, and, uh, and they deserve this championship. Speaking of changes, I know you weren't happy with the way the first half went. What do you think the main problem in the first half was? We just, we, we didn't play well. Fundamentally, we were turning the ball over. We were forcing things. We weren't communicating. We weren't finding men quick enough. And, uh, you know, but at the end of the day, at the end of the first half, it was 6-6. Six, six. You know, we hadn't played well. It was 6-6. Six, six. Went in the locker room, talked about things. Hey, we just need to be better in all facets of the game. Came out, good team, solid team defense, get five behind the ball, create turnovers, create opportunities, and we went from there. What do you think was the turning point in the second half? Can you point to one thing that really turned around and put the game in your favor? I, know, I think we scored two two quick goals there within 12 seconds, and I think that really got our confidence back, and we started to play from there. But, uh, you know, I just think in the second half, we played great team defense. Sagu made some great saves, and, you know, we rolled from there. Talk a little bit about Dennison Cabral, how he's been able to keep up this level after all these years, been a part of the four championships with yourself. What does he bring to your team? Yeah, he's a tremendous player, obviously, and he brings an indoor, you know, he's a great finisher. He's one of the best finishers I've seen. Uh, he's got such passion for the game. He's bought into the, the defensive philosophy as well. And, uh, you know, he showed tonight while he's one of the best players in the game at, at age 30, whatever he is, you know. So uh, unbelievable year for him. Uh, during one of the timeouts early in the fourth quarter, the score was 12 to 8. I believe there might have been like 11 minutes to go. And at that time, it seemed like you, you talked to your guys a little bit about changing the strategy. I know Mike Looking Land was also making some comments there about getting numbers behind the ball, sagging behind the numbers. Did you change? Did you feel at that time? Did you know that maybe 12 was going to be enough? Well, I just thought we were going forward a bit too much at that point. You know, it was 12-8. We didn't need to necessarily attack with four. We wanted to attack with three, stay balanced in the back, not allow them to counterattack at all. They're a good counterattacking team, so it was more, hey, be smart about what we're doing, and uh, it worked for us. Is it too early to think about a fifth yet? Not with this group of guys. I mean, if, we, if they play the way they're capable of playing, uh, that's certainly not out of the question. Well, thanks, Coach. I appreciate your time. Congratulations on a great season. All right, thanks a lot. Hey, I want to say a quick hello to all my family back in New York and friends watching the game. Love you guys. Guys? 14-11 Baltimore, a winner in the MISL championship game. There's the trophy as the Baltimore Blast celebrate once again. They won in 2 3 6 and now here in 2008. We'll take a timeout, come back with more of our championship postgame here on Fox Soccer Channel. The Baltimore Blast, once again with the title, going back to Baltimore. Hockey where Danny Kelly holds the MISL championship trophy. 14-11, the Baltimore Blast defeat the Monterey La Raza here tonight. And, uh, you know, Monterey, Roger, uh, you know, the last 15 minutes we've been talking about Baltimore, but... What an impressive close to the season, and what an impressive postseason that side has had. Absolutely, and it's, it's tremendous the, uh, the excitement that's been generated, not just in Monterey, 
or uh, the province they're in, but uh, Nuovo Leon, as you know, but in Mexico as a whole. The, the interest in this team has just become national, so which is astonishing. It's terrific for the league, and it's terrific for Monterey, and uh, Eric Geyer did a remarkable job. I mean, he had very few experienced players, but they were key core players. He drafted so well, and getting Martinez and, and, and Dolevsky and the, the experience of Neil Gilbert, and then finding players like Medina in open tryouts. He, uh, he gradually built this squad, and then he taught the guys who hadn't played indoors, and outdoor soccer is a totally different game now. He, but he taught them, and he blended them together, and, and they became a very effective unit. Well, it wasn't just the Baltimore Blast that will be taking hardware home tonight uh, back to Maryland, but several other players uh, this week collected awards for their fine individual performances this season, and uh, there was, of course, first team and second team, all-league MISL, and Let's show you some of the individual awards. Hanoni Martinez, he was the defender of the year in the major indoor soccer league, and we saw it tonight. He made some outstanding defensive plays. Everybody knows about how he can attack, but the way Hanoni Martinez can also play defense, I think, is underrated often. Yes, he's an, he's an extraordinary player. Led the league in blocks, just an extraordinary player. And then the goalkeeper we saw tonight, Sagu, just so competent, so composed, just makes that, that goal area look small. Perfect timing, perfect anticipation, great distribution, just a very solid keeper. Segu, the goalkeeper of the year in the Major Indoor Soccer League, also uh, obviously first team all MISL at the goalkeeper position. Congratulations to Martinez, congratulations to Segu, who also takes home the most important trophy of all tonight, the 2008 MISL Championship Trophy. And once again, Keith Tozer from the Milwaukee Wave, the 2008 MISL Coach of the Year. And Keith Tozer, in many ways, has revolutionized this game with the system he's come up with, a system that the MISL MVP and 2008 Puma scoring champion Greg Howes has uh, really used to his benefit. But, hey, let's let's be honest. Greg Howes would fit in anybody's system. <laughs> he fit in my team. Uh, yeah, Keith Tozer, six times coach of the year and uh, just a tremendous uh, contribution over the years to the sport. So Greg Howes, the MVP, and also the Puma scoring champion you see there. Rookie of the year, Frederico Mugin from New Jersey with 22 goals this year. Really a nice-looking young player. We look forward to seeing him for years to come in the major indoor soccer league. He's a good one for New Jersey. Yep, target player and uh, got 20-odd points, so 20-odd goals, and uh, got a lot of potential. First team, all MISL now. Here they are for the major indoor soccer league in names that are not unfamiliar to anyone. Hanoni Martinez, once again a first-teamer. We talked about Segu and Howes, but... How about Drew Callahan? He made the second team when he was with the Detroit Rockers several years ago, but, uh, Roger, you and I got to see him play a lot this year with our TV package with Comcast in Michigan, and, boy, Drew Callahan, outstanding two-way player. And then Dino Dolevsky, he's back on the first team again. And Dan Antonio, a rookie to the first team, and what a season he had for New Jersey. Yes, he did indeed. He did indeed. But Drew, very pleased for him. He had, what, four years out of the game, and, uh, and, and, uh, done so wonderfully well as both as a defender and goal scorer and now presentations of individual awards here tonight Sagu will accept his award for being the goalkeeper of the year and he's also with Sal Rosamilia who will have a chance to talk with the not only goalkeeper of the year but the MISL goalkeeper champion as well Sal thanks guys here with uh, goalkeeper Sagu one of the stars of tonight's game uh, I thought a key to the match was early in the second quarter uh, when you guys were down 6-2 at the time. Uh, you made a couple of huge saves. Uh, I think going down by six points at that point would have been difficult for you guys. Yeah, but this is this is very, very hard game, you know, especially like the final. We like six score. I entire game 6-6. After that, Baltimore starts to play much better, you know. But this is the final, you know. Sometimes you go up, you go down. I have to do my job inside the field, you know, make more saves than I can. He helped my team be champion. And and some tremendous saves today. This is the most I've ever seen you have to fly around. I mean, there were balls in the upper 90s all over the place, and you were flicking them all over. Uh, you must have felt pretty good tonight. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. I, I just tried to do my job, you know. Today, especially today, you know, a lot of, a lot of emotion, you know, for, for playing the, the championship game two years ago. I have opportunity for play the championship, but I stretch my cap. I stay 
out of the game, I'm so frustrated. This year I have opportunity for play the beginning for the finish, you know, I'm very happy for helping my team and be champion more time for much more blessed. All right, well, congratulations, Sagu. It was a tremendous game. You, you guys deserve the championship. Thank you very much, you guys. Uh, thank you for everybody coming here to support the Baltimore team. Al, back to you. All right, Sal. So Sagu with uh, an outstanding season for Baltimore. He came into the MISL with the Dallas Sidekicks. Uh, he was down there for a number of years. Of course, Dallas had played in some other indoor leagues, and then the Dallas Sidekicks folded, and he winds up in Baltimore in the blast. You know, Roger, you look at this Blast roster, they've done an excellent job at getting some of these guys off teams that went away. David Basco from the Harrisburg Heat, he was a core player for a while, still a member of this team. Sagu from the Dallas Sidekicks, of course, uh, the biggest prize of all, Adato Neto when Cleveland went away. Robbie Aristodemo also uh, came from Cleveland. It, you know, Baltimore's done a fine job picking up those extra players uh, when the MISL drops teams, and uh, they get some of the most talented. Now the MISL all-rookie team this year, and some players that we're looking forward to watching in the years to come. And no, that's not P.J. Wakefield there, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he's got some of P.J.'s skills. Here they are. Jose Vonti, speaking of rookies, uh, he was the goalkeeper. We saw him tonight, uh, really an outstanding guy between the pipes and just a rookie to the MISL. When this guy gets a, a few more years' experience, he's going to be very dangerous. Yeah. Jonathan Santos from Milwaukee and J.P. Rodriguez in the back from Orlando. Rodriguez, an excellent two-way player. We saw Yvonne Medina. Roger, you talked about him. Uh, Eric Geyer finding him at open tryouts. Warren Oka from Milwaukee, and then the rookie of the year, Frederico Mugin from New Jersey. But there's a lot of talent there that's still developing. Yeah, there is indeed. Some of them are, are not rookies in the sense that you would think, because Medina's, I think, about 26, 27 years old, and Bonte is a little older, played outdoors. He's 25, played in Argentina. But they're rookies to the indoor game, and it is a different game. It, you can't just take outdoor skills and, and translate them to this small field situation where you have to use the boards, you have to play in very short bursts. Physically, it's a totally different game when you're playing for 30, 40 seconds at a time at 100% as opposed to playing 90 minutes and pacing yourself. So it, it's a huge adjustment, and I, they are genuinely rookies, even though they're a little bit older than you might uh, might anticipate. Our man down on the field, Sal Rosamilia, once again has another interview for us. Sal. Thanks, guys. Here with David Bascom, uh, player slash assistant coach with the Baltimore Blast. And I think uh, maybe the key goal of the game tonight was the one that you assisted to Carlos Garcia about midway through the third gave you guys a 10-8 to 8 lead, uh, which you never gave up the rest of the match. Tell us about that goal. I'll tell you what's important. You know, all game, Carlos has been shouting at me, man. you got to find me. you got to find me. You know, I told him, I said, listen, man, I'm the old man of the league. I said, you just run. You, you know, try to make it happen. You know, the ball came in, you know, came inside, you know, and just kind of rolled it back to him. When I turned around, I was so happy I ran in, you know, because I was fatigued. I said, i got to run off this field. You know, so it was great. Well, you call yourself the old man of the league. Will you be back for another season? Well, I'll tell you what, you know, I got some taps on my shoulder, you know, from the owners and stuff and just told me just hold off. You know, but right now, you know, I still love this game. I still have a passion for this game. So I got to see, as long as the younger players are coming through the game and if these guys come through the game mature and understand how to play this game, then I can walk away. To walk away as a champion, greatest feeling. And tell us a little bit about what you're doing at your, in, your, uh, in your home country. Oh, it's great, you know, we got ISL running. You know, it actually starts up at the end of May. You know, it's professionally that we started, you know, to give... You know, you know, just the young players from Green, you know, because, it, you know, it's very important, you know, that they stay focused. You know, a lot of community service work, you, you, you know, it's very important. So for me, it's a great thing, you know, to go back. I'm going back on Wednesday so I can enjoy it with them. Well, congratulations. I won't keep you any longer. Go enjoy this tonight. Thank you very much. Al. All right, Sal. David Bascom, another great story coming over to Baltimore from Harrisburg. He had some his best years, the prime of his career with the Harrisburg Heat. Uh, he did have a couple of great years here in Baltimore, and he's still a very, very dangerous player when healthy, and it's great to see that in this latter part of his career, Roger, he was able to come to a team that could provide him a chance to win championships, and that he's done. Absolutely. 17 years he's been playing this game. You know, he's a, he's a survivor. He's even the commissioner of his own <laughs> soccer league, I believe. In, uh, in the Bermuda. Bahamas, in the Bermuda. Yes. Yes, commissioner of a league down there. So uh, a man who's put a lot into soccer, 17 years of his heart and his, his body into indoor soccer. Been a great contribution, and I was pleased to see him playing tonight because he he hasn't played quite so much in this last season. But uh, it was great to see him getting as much time as he got. How about these fans for the Baltimore Blast, Roger? I don't think uh, out of the group that came, many of them have left. They're still getting pictures, talking with players. Uh, they're as excited as can be. They 
made the trip up here. Plenty of them to support their team tonight, and they were rewarded with the victory. They were indeed. Some of them are just waiting for your autograph, Al. But right, they, of course. Yeah. But well, they, they think I'm you, you know. <laughs> they, they are, they're terrific supporters. They get great support. Baltimore is the best supported team in the league, unless the Monterey's numbers maybe caught them at the end of the year. But uh, Baltimore's been a tremendously well-supported team over the years. And, and we hope to see more teams coming into the league in the future and, uh, and see some expansion. Right? The basis is there. Yeah, it's a great game. Uh, as we've often said, it's, as far as television goes, it's a great game to deliver on TV, and it's a game that I've been hooked on since I went to my first game back in 1981, and ever since, it's like, how can you go to this, how could you go to a game? How could you watch it on TV and not enjoy it, not be yeah. excited by it? And there's Eric Geyer uh, getting congratulations for what his team did this year. Of course, he loses the championship tonight, but to get his team here in the first year for an expansion club is quite an accomplishment. It, it is indeed. It's, uh, what an adjustment he's made. He grew up, he played soccer in the, in the second division in the Bundesliga in Germany, and then he came over to the United States and, and went to the San Diego Soccers. And, and we talk about deans of coaching, you know, and, and a guy who doesn't get mentioned very much is Ron Newman. But Ron Newman won 10 titles in 11 years with the San Diego Soccers. And as you can see, Sal Rosamillion has Eric Geyer with him. Let's send it down to the field right now, fellas. One minute to do it. One minute to do it. Okay. Here with Coach Eric Geyer of uh, Monterey, La Raza. Here with, here with Coach Eric Geyer, uh, head coach of Monterey, La Raza. Coach, uh, I know it must be difficult to, to speak about the game. Uh, you guys were tied at halftime. What do you think Baltimore did different in the second half to have more success? I think, I think even the game shifted a little bit earlier when we had the 6-2 and committed some errors where we let them back in from the back door to create that 6-6. And I think that momentum swing was right there, right before the half. And they carried it on into the second half. They had more momentum going in all their drives and uh, offensively and what they've been doing. And, uh, uh, you know, we played four games against Baltimore during the regular season, and they've been absolutely four game, great games, you know, battles. And uh, this time they came out on top, and uh, they deserve to win the championship. There's no question about it. It was more the experienced team who won over the rookie team. Well, it, no doubt it was a great year for you guys. Congratulations as an expansion team getting to the final. Tremendous. Uh, we thank you for your time. No, no problem. Thank you very much for having us, and uh, let's see what's happening next year. Thank you, Coach. Back to you guys. Thanks for watching tonight. We're out of time. Congratulations to the Baltimore Blast, the 2008 MISL champions for Sal Rosamilia, my partner Roger Faulkner, and our great crew here tonight in Milwaukee. I'm Al Pulowski. I'll see you next season. Have a good one. Or in Milwaukee, if we take a look at the 2008 MISL champion Baltimore Blast getting some team pictures now and wearing their MISL champion hats. And now they've won the MISL championship for four of the last six seasons. And what an effort here tonight against the Monterey team that provided them with a pretty good game. Definitely not an easy one. Let's go down to the field now. Sal Rosamilia with more for the championship side. Thanks, Al. I'm here with P.J. Wakefield and his 19-month-old son, Mason. Uh, this is P.J.'s fourth championship as well. First as captain, where do you rank this one? Oh, well, they all rank up there high, and uh, everyone's special because, uh, you know, you're different guys, and everyone, everyone, everything means different, every one of them. As captain of the team today, it was 6-6 at halftime. Did you go into the locker room at halftime and say anything special to the boys? Well, we knew we didn't play that good of a half. The, uh, they took us to us the first 30 minutes, and we knew they, that they gave us all they had, and uh, we were yet to play our best. And uh, we knew we just had to come out, play our, the same way we played all year, playing defense, and uh, that would take care of things on the offensive end. The defense, uh, I mean, there's certainly many talented players offensively for your side, and Cabral had a great match tonight. But the defense has really been the mainstay of the Baltimore Blast throughout their championship run. What is it about your structure, about your system that's so successful? Well, we based it all on defense this year, saying, you know, get five guys behind the ball, and that's what we did a lot. Keeping teams, trying to keep teams to uh, limit them to four goals a game, and, uh, you know, to keep teams off with just eight points, uh, we know we have an explosive offense that's going to get uh, goals, and uh, we're going to win the game that way. All right, well, PJ, as captain, I'm sure you want to get your hands on that trophy. Congratulations on a great game and a great season. Thank you. Thank you very much. Al? And now let's send it down to the field for the presentation of the 2008 MISL Championship Trophy. 
to the Baltimore Blast. their fourth title in six years but as you can tell by the celebration it's one that they're relishing and don't take it as well hey we've done this before it's nothing new every year is something new yep, absolutely there are tears of happiness tears of joy people on cell phones talking to home it's just uh, it's just a great experience these guys remember this for the rest of their lives and Meanwhile, there's disappointment in Detroit and Chicago and Milwaukee, and there's always another year, Al. There sure is. We'll take a break here on our post-game wrap-up show of the 2008 MISL Championship, the Baltimore Blast, the champions of the MISL once again. 